What's up, YouTube? Sean the Gamer here, and we're going to be talking WWE Clash of Champions that just went off the air not too long ago. Um, as of my recording this, I watched it live. I watched it on several different screens. I've had the full experience, and like I watched it in 4D. It's like, it was almost like I was there because I had it on my TV and on my phone and on my computer so I can tweet get my screenshots ready for this review so I can have it up by 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon you know before I go to the gym and stuff oh, I have it recorded and screenshots ready and then I can just put everything together before I go to the gym and by the time I get back from the gym it'll be nice and rendered to be watched before raw so let's jump into this real quick uh the pre-show was pretty fun it's always fun to listen to Booker T and Lita and King and them talk about, you know, the matches and things like that. So, uh, and Renee. Renee is like the new voice. And like I said, you should just have anything new. You should just have Alita introduce it because she talks with so much enthusiasm about the Cruiserweight division. So let's jump into this review. Like I said twice already. Nia Jax versus Foxy. Foxy actually put us some offense. So we actually, for the first time, had to see Nia Jax fight back. Mm. Uh, but it didn't last too long and a Fero just popped up on my Pokemon Go. Uh, so I'm going to be catching this as I do this review. Uh, where is it in my room though? Where is it? Oh, there it goes. Right in front of the wall. So, yeah, it was the first time we had to see Nia Jax put up some defense. But, you know, she disposed of Little Foxy. So, Nia Jax won that. I called that. Uh, to open the show, we had the New Day versus the club. The New Day actually had to cheat the win. To retain their titles. Yeah, Xavier Woods popped. Uh, Anderson, Carl in the head with, uh, I about to say Felicity. That's the name of my uh, glass piece. Um, or somebody off the Arrow TV show, which was probably what I should have said the first time. But um, Francesca for the win. So New Day retained. What else happened after that? Then I forgot about the Best of Seven series, which actually might be match of the night, to be honest. Um, this Best of Seven series was, this match was great. It ended with a double double count out disqualification because they were just beating the holy hell out of each other. And they, were, they kept playing up to this match, like during the pre-show and like before the match. They like had a recap of all the damage these two has been taking over the past seven or eight weeks because of this uh best of seven series and cesaro looked like he didn't have an arm sheamus couldn't walk <laughs> so they just beat the hell out of each other for at least a good 20 25 minutes i wasn't really keeping up with the time this pay-per-view i just knew by the time 10 o'clock rolled around they better have made up my mind if i was going to turn and watch the season premiere of quantico so we'll talk about that uh I'll probably review that first episode probably Monday or Tuesday of Quantico. Um, but yeah, that match ended in no disqualification. And then that led into the Cruiserweight match, which I love how they take the uh, time. They build it up. You know, they have the video packages and stuff like that. And then they go in, change the ropes, change the lighting, you know, change the graphics on the uh, on the new curtains on the ring apron and the, uh, the, the Titan Tron. So it was T.J. Perkins versus Brian Kendricks. A couple of, uh, of, of I don't want just not botches, but sloppy spots. But other than that, it was a very good match between these two. Brian Kendricks is just, like, really, really good. I've been on a Brian Kendricks bandwagon. He's been one of those people I've been saying, we need to get back for the longest in WWE. He's finally back. Um, I'm still praying that maybe we can get Paul London back one day. I know that's never going to happen, but I just want it. So... Uh, it was a good match. TJ Perkins retained with that knee bar. And I actually saw the way he actually puts it on. Yeah, and that thing hurts. It's kind of like a... Oh, the knee bar is kind of like a variation of a figure four. So if you actually look at it, it'll like actually hurt if you put somebody in the MMA or something like that. And that's how they're treating it. Like, they're, it's like they're, 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 they're phantom weights. It's, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the whole, uh, whole little thing by itself. It's like how... Back when the UFC didn't have all the smaller division, like the women's division and the, like the the under two, one one seventy divisions and things like that. Now they got them. That's what the cruiserweights are too raw. So I, I like that feel to it. T.J. Perkins won that. 
And then we move on to... I think I did this out of order, but it doesn't matter. Then we had somewhere in this Sami Zayn versus Jericho. Jericho won this with a cold breaker after a very, very good match. Jericho is like right... It's catching up to Matt Hardy with like the with the gimmick. It's catching up to be best gimmick, best character of the year. It was a really good match though. Uh, Sammy looked like he was about to win. He tried to hit like the Hoover kick like three times, and then just didn't work out. And I did the Hoover kick setup is the new Sweet Chin music. If you have not figured that out yet, so Sammy Zayn for world champion before 2018. So there's that. Then we go into the women's title match or something like that. It was the triple threat match. The rematch from WrestleMania just replaced Becky Lynch with uh, replaced Becky Lynch with Bailey, and then replaced the moonsault from the outside with a double moonsault on the inside to both uh, Charlotte. I mean, to both Bailey and Sasha Banks. But it was it was a really good match. It was a fun match. They keep playing around with this fact that you know I love how they're playing with injuries. You know, you know, actually showing that they actually get hurt. They're not these super unstoppable creatures. You know, these actual people fighting for a prize and these prizes. You know, hurt your body and things like that. So I love the they're playing on that. And Charlotte just kind of dominated this match. Uh, she is the queen for a reason. I was hoping that we'll get like some Emma interference, but we didn't. But it's all good because Charlotte still retained the title and the queen is still champion. So then we go into the United States title match. Uh, Rusev versus Roman Reigns. Uh, Lana tried her best to to retain her title, but you know. Roman Reigns conquers all. He's like, I don't want to say he's the new John Cena, but I don't want to say he deserves it, but you have to do something with Roman Reigns at this point. So put the belt on him. It didn't hurt Rusev losing it because, you know, Rusev is a monster now. Rusev is back to being that monster now. And the only thing that he cares about is Lana. They're like Beauty and the Beast now. So, or, um... I want to say Godzilla and Jane, but, you know, King Kong and Jane, however you want to put it. So, I love Rusev. He's always going to be my favorite. Lana will get her United States title back one day, or hopefully they can even move on to bigger and better things. Maybe, you know, Rusev can start working his way up into the, to you know, start building towards being a credible threat to the Royal Rumble and maybe even winning it for this year, unless you're going to have Brock Lesnar win it, which I don't want to see. It's about time to start picking who's going to win, which brand, first of all. They got to go 15-15. Ooh, okay, we'll think about that later. Uh, Then we go into the main event of the evening, which, of course, was Seth Rollins versus uh, Kevin Owens for the title. Kevin Owens, of course, is the new Red Velvet Cake champion. So this match had a lot of buildup to it going on. From the past few weeks, the whole thing with Steph, Stephanie not really being, well, it's not Stephanie not being honest, it's just everybody knows what Stephanie is. And what Stephanie is, if you haven't figured this out yet, her character is not a face, her character is not a heel, her character is there to piss everybody off. (laughs) That's all her character is. She's not a face. She's not a heel. She's not a good guy. She's not a bad guy. She's just a a thorn in your side. (laughs) So, all that's been going on. Why did uh, Triple H turn on him and yada, yada, yada. We get into the match. The match was great. And then we start getting to the spot where Kevin Owens was about to pop up Powerbomb, Seth Rollins. He escapes, but... In his escape, he accidentally elbows the ref out the ring. And then Chris Jericho, the best friend of Kevin Owens, comes down. Uh, and they start tag teaming Rollins. Rollins starts getting the better. And just when we think Rollins is about to win, he tries to go get the ref. The ref is like completely laid out thanks to that elbow. Uh, Stephanie comes to the ring, to the uh, entrance, and sends a new ref out. So as soon as the ref and... Seth Rollins gets back into the ring. 
power bomb pop up style and one two three still champion Kevin Owens. The show itself overall was really really good. I like during Kevin Owens' entrance, they show him coming out the gorilla position. Uh, they were talking about his history, you know how when like 21 years ago or something like that, or 2000, no, it was 1995. His dad took him to see his first show, which in your house three. Um, I don't think that's the one where Shawn Michaels turned on Marty Jannetty. I gotta do some research, you know. Keep keep my uh, my old history, my old wrestling history. You gotta keep that sharp. So I need to go see what was the significance of that pay per view. I don't, you know, just for reference sake. But this pay per view that I did watch personally was a really good show. Was it the best show of the year? No, it was a it was a raw. Without all of the... You can't even say without all of the backstage stuff. Because they had the backstage stuff. So it was just a better Raw. Like, just a better Raw. Speaking of Raw, I don't think I'm going to be watching Raw tomorrow. At least not in... You know, I'm not going to be fully focused on... Focused. Focused on Raw. Because I actually want to watch the debate. I actually want to watch the debate. Um, Unless I can find a way to... Uh, you know, learn how to do picture in picture and something, or I just well, never mind. I'll watch Raw live, I can just pull up a live stream. So, we're still going to watch Raw, but I am going to be watching the debate because I am worried about my country and if I need to go move somewhere else in, in a couple of months. So, people are texting me, so it's about that time to wrap this video up. If you saw the pay per view live, or if you've seen the pay per view, what do you think about it? Who was your favorite match of the night? Mine would probably be actually the best of seven series match. I'm not even gonna lie about it. It was the best of seven series match. Cesaro and Sheamus are two of my favorites uh, in the business right now. Sheamus is like totally, I won't say overrated, but he was a part of that time period where people were just getting tired of whoever, whoever was on top. Because you gotta remember, Sheamus hasn't really been there that long he's been there for a minute but i don't think he's been there that long to be honest so uh he's like a four-time world champion he beat cena his first time but he, he hasn't been there is he been there a decade yet because i would put because kofi's been there longer than sheamus i believe doesn't matter but what was your favorite match of the night and cesaro's just good period so that was my match of the night it's probably gonna go on my match of the year candidate date list. So, what was your favorite? My throat is my throat. My voice is gone. I'm about to stop talking. Uh, leave that down below if you want to follow me on anything other than YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. All link down below. And if you are following me, you already know all my thoughts on the pay per view. So, anything extra, I live tweet it. So, follow me on twitter sean the gamer on there as well same spelling all uh, same underscore same placing so uh during events like this you know raw smackdown nxt we do live stream so with all that being said share this video out with your friends subscribe if you haven't already and like and always show your support I am Sean the Gamer, and I am out of here.